Um, here we're going to show how to make a 3D model from a normal map we got from the local municipal. Uh, and here we've taken the central part of Lungnesund and we placed all the houses in the central part and we think it's about 300 houses total in this drawing. Here we're just uh, looking around in the city uh, and we can we can turn it a bit around. Uh, it's going to be a lot nicer when we add proper textures and uh, we'll get to that a bit later. So uh, let's open a normal DXF map here. Uh, locate DXF here. It might as well just be a DWG file for that matter. Uh, and this map we've just gotten from our local municipal. And uh, it actually contains a large amount of data. Uh, our local municipal has got very good maps though, uh, at least over the city of Langnesun. Um And uh, all the information is right here. It's in, uh, it's in URF coordinates and it's all separated into different layers. And all of the information is contained here. So if I press the mouse wheel down, and uh, if I look around, we can see that uh, all of the buildings are laying right here. Uh, the roof ridges are here in 3D already. Here we see the map from uh, from the top, and we're just showing the layers. And we can see that the, the height contours are layered. Um, and we can enter the different nodes here. If we click down here, you can see us jumping from point to point. Uh, you see the small red dot there. Uh, you have all the information about them in X, Y, and Z there. Uh, and here are the height contours from the south. And we can easily see that the, the distance between them is one meter. So this is a good way to check that the map is imported or created correctly. And uh, now we're going to add the road layer as well. We've gathered all the road stuff into these layer filters, uh, layers grouped into drawers. Um, and here we can go into the properties. And we can we can look at the first one. It's lying over the layer translated as a road center line. Uh, and in the second one, we have everything containing colors and line types. And on the custom one, we can add our own information. And uh, over here, it's pretty interesting, especially for the ones who are working within the municipal, since we can see all of the road data that is in the database. Uh, we can tell what ID the road has, the road number, measurement method, accuracy, visibility, and data collection. And we can, uh, yeah, we can see that this one is from 1995, which is uh, w which we can see because uh, it wasn't the best one. Uh, but we can still see uh, a lot of information down here. We can, for example, tell that this road has a, has a max vehicle length of 19.5 meters, and we can tell that it's the SOCI code 4.0. Um, they have apparently revised uh, their maps recently, so if we turn on the layer big, which is buildings in English, uh, here we've also gathered this under layer filters and we've systemized it a bit. Uh, here we can see that the roof ridge lines, uh, we see that on, on the layer over there, um, if we click it, we can see that it's a roof edge. It's on different layers and this is added recently by the, by the roof constructor from aerial photographs. Um, here you have building lines. Uh, when we look at a map, you can't see the wall lining, but we can see the roof. Uh, here we can see some more data, and um, we can see that it's an FKB map on level 2, uh, with SOCI version 4.01, with visibility 19, and so on. We have all information down here. Uh, we can see Bamre Municipal, and we have the date of when it was constructed, 17th of February 2012. We can see all the information down here, and this can be pretty handy, especially for the people uh, who work in municipals. And this is why we're showing this stuff. It's uh, not anything 
uh, the average drawer needs to think about, but it's it's good to know that everything is there if you need it. Let's add property boundaries as well. Everything is in here already, so we can just uh, turn off the height contours, and uh, we can just zoom in here, and uh, let's just click this click this uh, line right here. And here's the information about it. If we go to selection info, uh, which is information about our selection, we can see that this property has eight points in it, and uh, the area is 189.55, and the circumference is uh, 56. Similarly, here's a property with four points, area of 163.69, and a circumference of 51. And uh, here we've just added these properties, and we can see that we can click on a boundary point. Uh, we can choose by layer, we can enter the properties, and we might as well just add a star, for example, uh, to show us the boundary points in the properties. We can go back and rather add a normal cross and we can choose it to be one meter big. Remember that we're drawing in one-to-one -one scale in CAD and we can also uh, choose a different color for it and we can just press OK for this. Um, let's also show that we can measure in this thing. So we can just uh, we can just drag in the measurements like this. We're using a smart dimension and uh, just clicking on the lines and the measurements are coming in like this. Or we could uh, show them without the lines. Um, these are just uh, pulled in with, with edit tool and we can just uh, drag this wherever we want. And with a new coordinate palette we could just uh, export everything out and just get the coordinates uh, and we could have a measurement certificate in a very short time just by making a template that uh, we could just add behind this thing.